I think it's no understatement in saying that Ryu Onoshi is amongst one of the most underrated Dragon Ball animators. Right from the get-go when entering this franchise a decade ago, it was clear that he wasn't just good, he was exceptional. With superb character acting and a high level of movement consistently portrayed, never really seen to this extent in Dragon Ball, regardless though with other amazing animators like Yuya Takahashi and now Toshishida taking the spotlight quite often in modern Dragon Ball, winning the support of many fans including myself, I believe though it's due time to shine that light on Ryu Onoshi and dive into his catalogue of work and go over why he deserves more praise. But before we get to that though, the featured artist for this video is me. Yeah, I know it's been a while, but I've just set up a store and put up some new prints, so if you'd like to support the channel in some way, that would be amazing. Link will be in the description, and thank you for your continued support. So the first thing about Onishi's work is the lifelike movement he animates characters with. Let's take his scene from Dragon Ball episode of Bardock. When Bardock's walking, you have quite a nice arc as his fist swings back and forth, paired with good timing and spacing, and with his head bouncing and tilting side to side with every step, giving a menacing feel. Or when Chilled sees that Bardock was unfazed by his barrage of attacks, he closes his eyes and shakes his head, his head pops upward, then back down in anticipation, leading into an expressive shot of Chilled with his eyes popping out of his head, with small sweat droplets falling off. Onishi could have just had Chilled stare and then animate his mouth quivering and leave it there. Instead, he displays the emotions in a fun and exaggerated way. Then after receiving a beating by Bardock, his frustration comes to a boiling point with an even wider range of expressions shown once again. Onishi wants to sell that he isn't just mad, but that he's furious. He starts off with his arms out, then snapping to a hunched over position. He then springs out with his hands open, before clenching them and yelling, winding around as he lets out this big scream. There are multiple levels of anticipation here. Chill goes off to the side, before then flinging back his head, then the big release. It's very expressive and adds far more emphasis to what he's saying. And after he snaps back to his position, there is this twitching effect of his whole body. He then wipes some of the blood off his face before preparing for a big attack. The timing to the motion as he wipes the blood gives such an aggressive feel pairing perfectly in communicating his frustration. I also like the way he just doesn't animate the arm moving but the head back and forth. Even when the camera zooms out as Chill prepares this attack, Onishi doesn't just hold the key pose as he's talking, Chill's whole body is animated flailing around. It's actually quite remarkable how he was able to breathe so much life in these characters, considering the character designs certainly weren't overly animation friendly. But of course there's nothing better than a great Dragon Ball fight with big impactful blows. So let's go over to Dragon Ball Super Broly, which he made a very lengthy cut for. In particular this part where Broly lands a big hit into Goku, it starts off with a smear of Broly's fist and a tight close up of Goku with a slight gradual blur that lasts for 6 frames. As the fist pushes further into Goku, spit flies everywhere with a hold in on the punch. What sells it for me is the resistance coming from these two forces, Goku's head and Broly's fist. And Onishi achieves this by another snappy zoom in of Goku. If he had just kept the same camera angle, it would have diminished from the motion. He also has Goku turn his head to the viewer slightly, showing resistance, then he begins gritting his teeth. The timing is also spot on. All in all, it really adds an extra layer of energy and emphasis to the hit. But let's continue on some more. Broly then launches into the mountain with the first person perspective, again animated on ones. You have a similar process as before, holding the punch, great facial expressions, zooming in then out with that big release. Broly continues barreling forth with some really dynamic poses and great foreshortening. I also like the anticipation before he takes this pose. It wasn't entirely necessary, he could have just kept the pose similar with his left arm forward and sort of draw back his punch, but by adding it, it gives that extra bit of energy to his actions. The chalky brush effect around the smears looks great also. Moving on, Broly lands a big follow up blow into Goku, smashing him through the mountain and sending him flying. Onishi delivers more great anticipation here, with a lot of nice expressive wide eye shots of Goku. The strong curvature to the eyes really plays in well with that expressivity. Furthermore, another element that sells the impact is when he smashed through the icy mountain. He doesn't just get punched through one or two layers, he seems to go through six or seven. The use of the environment here does a great job at illustrating the power behind these punches. And all of these things come together and further tying into 
giving Broly this overwhelming and monstrous feel. Goku really doesn't get much of a chance to breathe here, which makes Broly feel even more threatening. But soon after, Goku transforms into a Super Saiyan, which leads me to discussing his amazing effects work. So right from the start, you get six impact frames as the camera zooms out. Not only are the shapes unique, but the variety of such shapes is really interesting. You have one here that is like two triangles with two separate circles on the outside. It's quite attention grabbing and it really gives this bombastic flair to this power up. I guess it's no surprise that he would be chosen to handle several power ups and transformations within this one movie, including Broly's big one later on. Other effects like water are pretty cool too. Let's go back several years to another movie, Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods. Incidentally, he also handles this power up slash transmission of power with a lot of style and impact, just like we saw prior, but to those water effects. So as the power rises, it creates several gusts of wind, tearing into everything, causing waves of water to splash out of the pool. The drawings have somewhat of a realistic feel while also adhering to a simple design. This is done by drawing the outline for the water quite detailed with lots of little soft bumps. However, the shading itself is quite minimal, but as the waves rise, the shapes become more triangular in nature, complementing the chaotic feel. Overall, this scene, like you can expect from Onishi's work, is handled brilliantly. Even if this isn't the real Super Saiyan God transformation, there's a great depiction of power on display and with a lot of movement. He really is an excellent animator that always delivers something memorable regardless of what show it is. I'm very eager to see what he'll present us with whether in movies or the main series going forward, but that'll have to end it there. I hope you perhaps gained a newfound appreciation for Ryu Onishi if you weren't already a big fan. I certainly did. Prior to making this video, I hadn't really checked out his work for quite a while and I've never actually explored his catalogue of work outside of Dragon Ball, like in One Piece and other shows, so that was quite fun. And like always, thank you for watching and your continued support, and I'll see you later.